Hi, I'm Cassie. I'm going to go through the basic essentials for an off-track bushwalk in the Northern Territory and the Kimberley. This is to help you really make the most out of your trip. If you have everything you need and not too much more than that, you can keep your pack weight down quite a lot and it'll really help you to enjoy the walking component of these trips in magnificent country. For some trips there will be some extra things that you need so please check, check your trip notes to make sure that you do have everything you need. For example on some trips there might be a pack float so you'll need a pack liner, there might be quite a few explorations during the day that you'll need a day pack for. Um, some trips you might need thermals if it's quite cool at that time of year or a lightweight puncho if it's in the wet season so please check your trip notes to make sure you have everything you need. So first clothing. So I have long pants are great for walking in off-track country. I have zip-ons here. These are the bottoms of my shorts so at camp I can take them off in their shorts and while I'm walking I've got long pants. A cotton shirt is definitely best up here rather than one of those synthetic hiking shirts. You can wet it, it'll stay wet for longer and keep you cool. It also breathes a lot better up here so please I recommend a lightweight cotton shirt for hiking. Obviously a broad, broad rimmed hat is incredibly important and hiking shoes make sure that they've got really good grip for when you're walking along rocky country and that they haven't been sitting in the cupboard for a few years because that's when the soles, the rubber in the soles, the glue in the soles deteriorates and the soles can come off mid-trip. I do have an all in my kit for fixing that in need be but obviously it's good to start with good quality hiking boots. I like low cut, some people prefer ankle support, that's personal preference. You won't need a lot of clothes beyond that, I like a singlet for when I get into camp, something that's nice and clean for just wearing around camp, a change of underwear. When you're next to the water you really can rinse your clothes and put them on a hot rock and by the time you've finished swimming they'll be dry often. So you really don't need many extra clothes at all that can be quite minimal. Because you don't have many clothes a lot of to use as a pillow, a lot of people like a lightweight pillow for sleeping. I like a silken cotton liner again because it breathes quite well, so a lightweight liner. Check your trip notes as to how warm your sleeping bag needs to be. Usually you only need a very lightweight sleeping bag. Most people like some form of air mattress. I choose Thermarest, they're not nearly as good as they used to be, they never used to get holes but at least they are easier to repair the holes in the field than some of the blow up air mattresses. Just make sure that your mattress is light. And some form of mozzie net or mozzie dome, we really don't have a lot of mozzies up here, they'll just be the odd one that can keep you awake at night. It's beautiful for sitting around the fire of a night, most people do like a mozzie net or mozzie dome at night. You really don't want to be having more than a kilo for one person. So freestanding is quite easy because you can just put it up anywhere but there's plenty of rocks so that's also fine for people that need to, sometimes it's hard to peg out those um, tents that don't have the same pole structure but pulling them out with rocks is always fine or a mozzie net you can obviously hang from a tree or if you're on the rocks make a tripod from sticks, plenty of long sticks around as well. So try and keep your weight nice and low in that area as well. In terms of eating utensils, you don't need a lot. I bring a bowl, spoon and cup. I like metal because it's durable. My cup is double walled so that's okay. But some people prefer the plastic because the metal does get hot when you put um, hot food in it. I have seen a lot of plastic bowls break which is why I like the durable. Obviously a trowel, incredibly important. It can be quite rocky in some areas so you do want a trowel to make sure that you can dig a decent hole at least minimum 100 metres away from the creek line and we do want to be digging good holes. So please bring a trowel, I like a metal one because it is quite rocky and hard in some areas and sometimes the plastic can break. You can find some lightweight metal trowels but plastic is also okay if you're careful with it. Um, toilet paper or some people bring a pump water bottle which is better because toilet paper does take a long time 
to break down in the natural environment. You won't need a lot in terms of toiletries. We want to keep this beautiful, pristine water very clean. Toothbrush, toothpaste. If you're bringing a sunscreen, please bring a natural sunscreen if you can, if your skin's suitable for them. And put it on at least half an hour before hopping in the water so that it's not coming off into the water when you hop in. A knife's always handy. Um, you'll need your breakfast, lunch and snacks and then your guide will be providing dinners and then handing that out, handing out the dinner and the cooking equipment at the start of the trip to share around that group weight. You'll need water bottles. A lot of the time you'll be walking next to these beautiful creeks and you'll be able to fill up from these creeks as you go. Sometimes you will be crossing from one creek system to another. So just check your trip notes to see what capacity you need in terms of water carrying. Some people also like some camp shoes, something like Tevas, so that when they're around camp, they can take their boots off and put them on to walk around. A sarong is incredibly useful. That'll be your towel men and women alike. Always appreciate a lightweight cotton sarong. Yes, yeah, so it'll be your towel. It's something that you can wrap around you at camp. It can be a pillow. It can be something to sit on. You'll find a lot of uses for a sarong, I'm sure. Everyone always appreciates having that. A torch, a head torch. I like a rechargeable torch, so bring spare batteries. And then on a longer trip, I also have a solar panel so that I can recharge it while I'm out in the bush. And a few other things that I recharge. So your guide will have a comprehensive first aid kit, so you'll only need to bring very basic personal first aid. Your guide will also have an EPIRB and a SAT phone and a repair kit for things like when your boots, if your boots break and obviously the map and compass and all the navigational gear as well as I said the cooking equipment. So please check your trip notes to see if there's anything extra specific to your trip that you need to bring and you might also like to have a look at some of the extras to see what you might enjoy but please think about keeping your pack weight light whilst also bringing everything you need to be comfortable and enjoy your trip.